Welcome back to my little workshop. My bolt has proven to be quite an excellent desktop laser. It has a bed size of 12 inches by 20, but I just found out recently that I'm able to work on designs up to 20 by 24 inches on this little bolt. I'm going to show you how today on LaserNug. Hopefully, just like myself, you good folks with a bolt have been getting a lot of good experience on this unit and finding out just how accurate, precise, and how well it engraves and cuts. You're also aware now that you can open the front door to get larger pieces of material in. Unlike some other larger lasers, the bolt does not have a pass-through out the back or from side to side, but you are able to open this door. And if you haven't tried this yet, once you've got this door open, in order to engrave with it, you need to shut off the door latch safety. It's right here. Just open the side panel, the left side panel, and you'll see a lot of circuit boards. And right here, there's a little button. And if you push this button, it will shut off the door latch safety for the front door. And you'll know it's off because the light on top of the laser will start flashing red. But this will allow you to engrave larger items through that front door. And up until just recently, I've primarily been using this functionality or this feature to cut down larger pieces of acrylic or plywood when I'm getting those standard 12 by 24 inch sheets, I stick them in the front as you folks have seen, and I cut off that extra four inches so that I can get a full 12 by 20 sheet in. But recently I found another great useful purpose for it. So if you have a few minutes for me today, I'll have you follow me into Lightburn and I'm gonna show you a feature that I learned called print and cut. You may have seen it on a number of different videos. Usually they're using a unit that's got a full pass through, but I'm gonna show you how I use it with the bolt with only a front door. Let's do this. So here in Lightburn, I've just got a simple design just for testing purposes. The purpose of this exercise is to be able to take something that's larger than your workspace and still have it engraved, cut or score or all three as you wish by just using the front door. I currently don't have a piece of material that's 24 inches that I wanna give up on this uh, example. So we're gonna use a piece of 12 by 19 inch MDF, and we're gonna assume whether it's 19 inches or it could be up to 24 inches, what we're going to do is demonstrate how to use the bolt with the front door when you've got something longer than you can actually fit in the bed. So I've made this 18 inches, you can see up here. I have it all grouped. And the first thing I wanna do is I just wanna rotate it. So now, as you can see, it's longer than the y-axis of my work bed. I'm gonna grab this, and I'm just gonna shrink this down a little bit. I've already put my settings in over here on the right-hand side, but what I need to do, in essence, is I need to cut this in half so I can engrave or cut half of it, take the material back out, put the material in the other way, and then continue the engrave or the cut to finish the design. You don't have to be cut exactly in the middle of your design. You just have to make sure that each of your two segments are less than or equal to 12 inches, which is your Y axis. So I have my design here vertically. I am gonna go over here to my rectangle tool and I'm gonna create a rectangle. And in my case, I'm gonna make it about 10 inches because I wanna make sure it overlaps the design. I'm gonna come back over here, click my select. And this one's, currently 11.7 so I'm just going to drop that because knowing that the design is only 18 inches in length so to speak I don't need a box that big I just want to make sure that the box encompasses the whole design which it does here we'll just make it a little wider so I can demonstrate okay and I'm going to make this a different color just so you can see it so let's make it green that I want to cut my piece in half and just to make it interesting, I'm gonna cut it in the middle of the N just so we can actually see this print and cut work. Now that I have that in there, I'm gonna highlight my box and I'm gonna duplicate it. I'm gonna drag this over. And let's just make it a little bigger so you can see. And what I wanna do is I wanna snap this second box to the bottom of the first one. So I'm just gonna grab the corner here I'm going to drag my box over and I'm going to snap it to the corner of the other one. Perfect. Now that I have a box on the top and the bottom, I'm just going to highlight all of this, 
together and I'm going to duplicate it and I'm going to put this one beside it. Okay. And what I need now is I'm going to need the top half and I'm going to need a bottom half. So on this first one, I'm just going to remove the box off the bottom. And on the second one, I'm going to remove the box off the top. So now I have the top and the bottom. So now what I want to do is remove the bottom off of the first and the top of the design off of the second. So I'm going to highlight the box, press shift, highlight my design, and I'm going to come over to the left here to this Boolean function on the bottom. And you'll probably see it's an intersection algorithm. I'm going to click that and as you can see the bottom disappeared. I'm going to do the exact same thing on the second. I'm going to highlight the green box, press shift, highlight my design, and I'm going to use that same command, click, and now I have the bottom. So now I have the top of my design and the bottom of my design. Before we go further, this is the part that often messes me up. If you enlarge it, you'll see that you have two little lines here in the middle of that banner. And what that is, is that's the leftover, so to speak, from the boxes that we created. So what we need to do is grab our design, ungroup it, but I'm gonna come over here to my node feature. I'm gonna highlight here, and then I'm gonna put my cursor on this little line here and I'm gonna delete it. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. And as I said, if there was a more intricate design here, you would see that line come across. I'm done there. I'm going to go back here to my select tool. I'm going to regroup everything. And I'm going to bring it back down into my workspace. There we go. It's on user origin and I'm going to send that to the bolt. There we go. There's my MDF. I'm going to open my door and I'm going to use the front load. I'm just going to load that out onto my honeycomb. I'm going to turn off the door safety. Flashing red. Now I'm just going to auto focus. I'm going to set my origin and I'm going to score the piece. Just like the doctor ordered. Just tilt that, hopefully you can see it. It's done the half of the design that I sent to the bolt and then stopped. When we put our material back in, because it's longer than the machine itself, I'm going to turn it around so that the engraved part is on more to the outside of the bolt. I'm going to slide it back in. Now we have to fix things up in light burn. Back in light burn, this is the half we've already cut, so I'll just put them over here. I'm gonna grab this half, and because I've inverted the piece 180 degrees of the material in the bolt, I also need to flip this 180 degrees. Once again, we're gonna come up here, ungroup it. I'm gonna grab my nodes, highlight this piece, because I also have to get rid of this little line with a D, this little line with a D, and this little line on my N, which I think I missed on the other one, 
with a D. Come back up here, I'll hit my select tool, and let's group that. So now I'm ready, and of course I just realized I forgot to take the little line out of the beginning of the N on the first half, but hey, those lines will get you. Here's the cool part. I've got that grouped. I'm going to make two crosshairs. I'm going to come down here to the bottom of this half. I'm going to grab one of them and I'm going to find a spot to snap to on one side of it and I'm going to snap this guy to the outside on this side. And I'll just zoom this in so you can see the point of that intersection is exactly at the end of that border on both sides. I'm going to highlight that and I'm going to go up to my laser tools and I'm going to click print and cut start wizard. Let's go to the laser. Here in the laser I've placed my sheet and it doesn't matter where you put the sheet and in fact you can put the sheet in on an angle because what you're going to try to do is take both of those targets or those registration marks and line them up to the end of your first half. So what I'm trying to do right now is I'm trying to take my red dot and I'm trying to get it lined up to this inside line right here, right at the very end. Let's go down one. over one and that should do it for the first one. Back here in Lightburn now, I've moved the laser to where my first registration mark or my crosshairs are and I'm going to set that. So now it's asking me to, to set my second target position. So we're back to the laser. I'm back at the laser. I need to move it to the outside of the banner at the very end of that score line, which is where I set my second target. So we're just going to zip over and what's helpful here is if my piece of paper is on an angle or not exactly square that's not a problem because I can move this exactly where it needs to be to make sure that it is in fact point two I'm just going to set this in smaller segments there we go and I believe I am bang on there here in Lightburn I'm gonna highlight that second target my laser is already where I believe it needs to be and we're gonna set that there's an option to be scaled or without scaling I don't know what scaling does I haven't changed the design so I'm gonna click no scaling I'm going to highlight the rest of my design and we're going to send it to the bolt. Okay, moment of truth. Well, actually, actually I got a bang on this time. There you have it. So that's quite a feature. And I think I'm going to start using it much more often. There's a couple of things that I wanted to offer to you. One, your laser, this RF laser, has a very, very tiny, tiny dot, so to speak, when the laser burns or engraves or cuts. The red dot pointer 
is actually larger, I think, than the beam itself or the laser beam itself. So what you might find is that if your red dot pointer is not exactly centered on your laser beam, you may find that you're going to be a fraction of a millimeter one way or another from where you put your red dot. So either you attempt, if you can, to play with your combiner beam to get your red dot pointer bang on the center of the laser beam, or you start to learn just how much or where that laser beam hits your material relative to the red point, the red, <laughs> the red dot pointer. And in this case, I've done this a few times now and I'm starting to get much better at it. As you can see, I was bang on both points. You are gonna see that little bit of residue or debris where the laser comes back to meet it, but that's, that's pretty normal. That's just a wash off, right? Either way, really awesome feature. I hope that was helpful for you folks. I'm gonna put two links in the description of this video. They're both to two videos that Lightburn itself has put out on its YouTube channel, which I think are really helpful and instructive and help me to understand it a lot. And I also wanna send out a special thanks to the support people at Thunder Laser Canada because they helped guide me through this because at first it wasn't as intuitive as it is to me now. Thanks kindly for hanging out today. I hope I see you again on the next one. Have a great week. Please be kind to each other. And I'll see you again. I'm Gord Potter, and you've been watching LaserNug. Cheers.